News coming in that Hope City Church lead pastor Jeremy Foster has resigned due to an admitted affair. This is the big mega church there in Houston, Texas. Oh boy, what a way to start off the year 2022. We'll get into all the details of this, guys, in just a second. First, if you could, please like this video, share it, hit the bell, subscribe, or wear the glasses because I'm blind. Also, guys, if you could consider making a generous donation to our ministry here, you can help us out on PayPal or Patreon for as little as five bucks a month. Sign up there, get access to our bonus content. We also include the links to the YouTube videos so you get alerted every time new content arrives. You can comment there, censorship free, send direct messages. Don't forget as well, sub to me on Rumble. That's our backup in case we're kicked off YouTube. We already post there anyway. So go check it out. All the links down below. Big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. So here we go. Houston, Texas, Hope City Church lead pastor Jeremy Foster. It has been announced that he has resigned his position of lead pastor there of the 12,000 member mega church. Now, this church was planted back in 2015. I mean, and it grew quick. I mean, by 2019, four years later, this thing was already up to 12,000 people. Uh, very popular in his own right. In fact, he has even more followers, that being Foster on social media, than the church itself has. I mean, the church itself has a lot of followers on social media, but Foster, very popular. But the news coming out by one of Hope City Church's overseers, who was also a pastor by the name of Mark Briggs, released a YouTube video talking about Foster's resignation and said that this was a an affair that he had with a woman that was not associated here in any way with Hope City Church. And this is, again, another example of these type of scummy pastors behind the pulpit that are doing these things behind the scenes they shouldn't be doing. He has a wife named Jennifer. They have a couple of children together. Uh, so I can imagine how they're feeling right now with this news coming out. Now, we don't exactly know how they found out about it, if they had, you know, you know, if there was, you know, if the, the woman that he was involved with had tipped off the church, something like that. But nevertheless, they found out about it. And I mentioned here the overseer, Mark Briggs, who sits there on the board, has mentioned that Foster is now gone and that they've already announced their interim replacements, that being Daniel and Jackie Groves taking over as the interim lead pastors here. Uh, in the meantime, we'll see if they're going to stay on board full time going forward. You know, that again remains to be seen. But let's also talk here about the fact that Hope City Church is a part of ARC, and ARC is the Associated Related Churches. That's what it stands for. They are one of the largest church planning groups in the country. And funny enough, many of these so called ARC churches have a lot of controversy and scandal around them. Many of them have been involved in similar situations just like this with Pastor Foster having to step down because of hearing him, his own words, an admitted affair, but many of them caught up in other scandals as well where other pastors have had to resign because of different allegations against them, not just an affair, but some of them even just, I don't even, I can't even get into some of the details that some of these pastors have been involved with, but no mention was made as far as Foster's future and what the church may be having in mind for him. Now, I say that because ARC has this, you know, tendency to try and rehabilitate these pastors and then put them back in the pulpits again. In fact, it was announced that this multi-million dollar lodge is going to be constructed here, you know, under the whole ARC deal, that these pastors who have had moral failings will be able to go to these, you know, this type of a, you know, a center, uh, this type of a lodge and receive, you know, treatment, godly counsel, but it's a lodge. It sounds like a nice vacation spot. I mean, there's always a debate, you know, when they fall like this morally, should they be put back into the position of a lead pastor or should they just be, you know, you know, reacclimated in slowly, get them back into the church itself, have them learn under a new pastor then maybe they get into some parts of ministry, but maybe they never see the pulpit again as far as a lead pastor goes. Because uh, oftentimes we see that it's hard to get the behavior out of these people, uh, especially when so many of them have just been living this as a lifestyle. And they get up there on Sundays and they preach a completely different message. So that remains to be seen. But we do know they are constructing this lodge and ARC does like to try and rehab these pastors. So we'll see if that ends up happening 
Again, like I mentioned here, Hope City has over 12,000 members, and they had no idea this was happening at all. So if you are someone that attends Hope City and you like to chime in on this, well, I welcome your thoughts down below. We've covered extensively throughout the years these fallen pastors and how so many of them were just wolves in sheep's clothing. And this is something that I think that we're going to continue to see because as we progress further along here in the last days, I believe that God is going to expose more of these types behind the pulpit. He's going to flush them out and replace them with godly men and women who are truly after his heart. Ones who are really looking to serve him. Don't have any sort of hidden agendas that aren't going around doing the dirty, dirty behind the scenes with other women or whatever the case is. Hopefully we see that going forward. I think that we will. But as I mentioned here about being in the last days, by the way, Jeremy Foster has not yet released a statement on the whole deal. For those of you that were wondering, I'm sure that will be coming though in the days ahead. At least at the time I'm recording this video, he hasn't. But as I mentioned, we are in the last days. Jesus Christ is coming back soon. But have you made him your Lord and Savior? Because if you haven't done that yet, well, I want to invite you to do that right now. We do this on all our videos. We give people the opportunity to give their life to Christ. And you could just do this as a simple prayer. I'd love to lead you in that prayer. You could even put it in your own words. The first thing you want to do, right off the top, is to acknowledge that you're a sinner. That's something that we all are, but God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. He died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. Repent means to turn from your sin, not just to say you're sorry, but to turn from lifestyles or habits, whatever it is in your life that goes against the word of God. You ask Jesus to forgive you. He wipes that sin away. The Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you, there is no greater decision you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. I'll have more on this for you guys down below. You can let me know your thoughts. Don't forget, the links to donate to our ministry are there as well. It is a great blessing if you could help us out. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.